everyone. A new band, Toto. Is that a band or an artist? I don't even know. Um, and the song is Africa. Well, since I don't know anything really, let me read and then we'll listen. Toto is an American pop rock band, okay, band, formed in 1977 in Los Angeles, California. Having released 14 studio albums and sold over 40 million records worldwide, the group has received several Grammy Awards and was inducted into the Musicians Hall of Fame and Museum in 2009. Africa is the 10th and final track on their fourth studio album, Toto 4. How imaginative. Toto 4. <laughs> Critics praised its composition and gentle production. The song continues to receive critical acclaim and was listed at 492 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. Oh, just slipping in there right at the bottom. While popular in the 1980s and 1990s, with the song being certified gold by the RIAA in 1991, Africa saw a resurgence in popularity via social media during the mid to late 2010s. I wonder what drove that. In 2015, Pike explained that the song is about a man's love of a continent, Africa, rather than just a personal romance. Huh. He based the lyrics on a late night documentary with depictions of African plight and suffering. The viewing experience made a lasting impact on Pike. It both moved and appalled me, and the pictures just wouldn't leave my head. I tried to imagine how I'd feel about it if I was there and what I'd do. Jeff Porcaro elaborates further, explaining, A white boy is trying to write a song on Africa, but since he's never been there, he can only tell what he's seen on TV or remembers in the past. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Complimentary, huh? Maybe. Or not. <laughs> well, maybe... I'll have to listen, but it kind of reminds me of uh, the writing of Kashmir, because I remember that they had never actually been there. They were in a different, different part of the continent, different part of the world, and and it was desert scenes that inspired their imaginative journey to a certain Kashmir. <laughs> and that piece also came across really musically powerful. So. You can sometimes come up with a very descriptive, impactful piece of artwork, even if you've never experienced the place that you're writing about. Although there's always the risk of it sounding a little bit contrived. Well, I haven't listened to this yet. I'm curious to see how this sounds to me. Although I must confess, I myself have never been to Africa, so I won't be able to evaluate whether or not it is truly accurate. But I can certainly evaluate my feelings and perceptions of the piece. So let's do that. Solitary company. I 
know that I must do what's right As sure as Kilimanjaro rises like Olympus above the Serengeti I seek to cure what's deep inside Frightened of this thing that I've become stop it <laughs> I hate to stop it so I am pleasantly surprised um, first of all I really love the fact that the way this piece of music is created is not trying to imitate or really portray the the traditional African musical sound well um, I've listened to uh, Paul Simon's Diamonds on the Soles of Our Shoes, and he did a fabulous job incorporating some of the uh, traditional musical influences um, with that piece for South Africa, and um, a wonderful job. But I guess I'm kind of happy that it wasn't attempted here because it it feels it feels right not to be trying to mimic Africa when you are when you are writing a love song to her. And so this is, this is the sound and the voice of one who feels a desire for this place, um, this part of the world, but it, um, it is not it is that identity moving towards Africa rather than trying to kind of remake oneself in the image of Africa. And I, I love that about it. I appreciate that about it. And I, and I like that. The drums have a nice, a nice beat, a nice rhythm. The voice has a nice tone to it. But I'll tell you what, what gets to me most is when the voice and the brass converge and there's this wonderful crush and and dissonance and and intensity of of musical experience there it's almost too much and and i love that it's like ah can i take it can i take it Oh, it's beautifully, painfully incredible. And I love those bits in the piece most. That's what's really uh, standing out as, okay, it's a great song, but those moments are just incredible.
<laughs> I like it. It's a beautiful piece, and I can't help but uh, kind of jump back again to Kashmir because I remember the motifs in that piece of music were very, very powerful, um, strong, picturesque. And this piece doesn't have quite such powerful motifs, but at the same time, they are very clear and, and um, clearly outlined. And that's what makes me kind of link the two musically, not just, not just, you know, the idea of someone who's never been there writing, writing a song about a place. I enjoy the way that the music in this one, well, it makes me think of when a person is in love, every little thing stands out so strongly. And somehow the music seems to um, do this so well. We have do, 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 do. We have the drums, which are so, so clear. We have this, which is also so clear. We have the voice, which just rings out as if it's ringing out in a, in a clear, still night air where you hear nothing else. You have, you have, when the flute came in, oh wow, it was so crystal alive and, and you heard nothing else except you were hearing everything else. But, but each musical sonic element, um, instrumental, melodic, harmonic, uh, motivic, was so distinct and um, uh, there, there was a level of clarity and, and intensity, um, hyper-awareness of each one of those that made me relate to it as if I were, you know, fallen in love with somebody and suddenly everything around me, I feel everything to some new level of intensity and awareness. That is what the music did for me. Now, I have to pay attention to the lyrics as well. What a beautiful idea. Well, I guess I've um, mentioned in the past this idea of writing a love song, which ends up not being to a person. Um, well, there's there's Vivo Per Lei, which um, is not a rock song really, but but I think I've mentioned it on this channel at least once before. It's the idea that you're singing a, a love song, you think it's it's to a woman, and then you get to the end and realize it's talking about music. Ah. And I'm also reminded of of um, Freddie Mercury's and Montserrat Caballé's Barcelona, this love song to a city. And now here we have a love song to a continent. We're just getting bigger and bigger. What else can we have beyond that? We're going to have to go to the the world and then we have to go to... Anyway, I'll leave that to somebody else to, to sort out. But but this idea of a love song to a continent, to, to Africa. What an undertaking. And how to express one's, one's feeling of connection and desire for such a large place with so much within it. I, I love, I love the way the lyrics kind of sum it all up. It's going to take a lot to drag me away from you. There's nothing that a hundred men or more could ever do. Mm, I'm not sure that that's written properly. It might be could never do. Um, I couldn't make it out in the lyrics whether it's ever or never, but the expression, a hundred or more men could never do. There's nothing they could never do. Um, or perhaps there's nothing that a hundred or men or more could ever do. Either way, it's, it's the idea of oh, the vastness and the power and the incredible feeling of desire and, and, and oneness and connection. And then, what else to say? I bless the rains down in Africa. I bless the rains down in Africa because, of course, 
The rains mean life. The rains mean prosperity. The rains mean refreshing. And, um, you know, it's, it's almost like an outpouring of love in this context. I bless the rains down in Africa. And I love that way of, you know, writing this sort of love song that manages to express so much. I bless the rain, gonna take some time to do the things we never had. Well, and it starts out, one of the first lines she's coming in, 12.30 flight. The idea of, I've never been to Africa, but I am going there. I am going there and, and um, you know, I, I can't help myself. I'm, I'm on my way. <laughs> going to take some time to do the things we never had. And this doesn't sound like a, a tourist mission. It doesn't sound like a safari excursion. It doesn't sound like a charity mission. It sounds like, it sounds like one heart with such strong desire and affection for a place and an expression of love for it and and feeling of connection well i would love to know if if that flight ever happened <laughs> what a great song though i like it and very enjoyable listen moving beautiful that was toto's africa and i'll see you soon <laughs>